What's going on guys? So in front of me, I have a little known product from a very well known manufacturer. And this company produces products that you may actually use yourself. They produce incredibly robust, very innovative hitches for trucks. And they also have a really cool adapter to convert a fifth wheel hitch to a gooseneck or to even convert a fifth wheel hitch to a shock absorbing fifth wheel hitch. And who is that company? That is Gen Y. So this product was sent to me for review and evaluation, actually from my channel sponsor, eTrailer, so not from Gen Y, and they actually wanted me just to evaluate this thing and to give you my opinion on it. Now, what you see inside of this box is very different than anything else you've seen from the folks over at Gen Y, and quite frankly, it's very innovative and different than what you've seen from any company. I think this is probably going to be one of the most innovative towing solutions for a problem that a lot of people have and may not have a readily available solution for. I know that was a whole mess of words right there, but once you see what's in this box, I think you'll agree. Hang tight, I'll be right back. Okay, so before I show you the Gen Y product unboxed, I'm gonna show you what I currently use to haul the gooseneck connection for both my fifth wheel as well as my gooseneck trailer. Now, this is a B&W setup, and I absolutely love it. I think from an OEM compatible product perspective, this is about the best you can get. I love the fact that it simply drops into the OEM gooseneck connection and locks in place with a handle like this. Um, I've never found a flaw with this, even though some folks say this handle can move sometimes. It can, but there's no issue with it doing that. I also like the fact that it gives you a rise right here, and it's about a three inch, maybe two and a half inch rise that really allows you to get that bed over rail clearance that you're looking for whenever you're hauling a gooseneck trailer or even a fifth wheel. You wanna be sure you have about six and a half to seven inches worth of over, over the bed rail clearance whenever you're hauling those types of trailers, which this gives me that ability to without having to have a hitch that I have to constantly adjust, which is really nice. These drop into my puck connections and then I have this Reese product right here. And this is simply a third one that I drop into one of the four puck connections for my trailer breakaway. So this is the setup I use. Now, you might be asking, if I like it so much, what's the problem? Well, there's no problem with any of this, really. This works really well. It's designed really well, but it doesn't do something that I've needed done for a while, or at least something that I would prefer. And that is give me additional clearance behind the back cap of the truck as well as behind the bed and the tailgate when it's down while you're hitching up as well as while you're towing. Okay, so now here's the bed of my truck. Um, super messy bed. I got tons of stuff back here. I got a DeWalt toolbox with a bunch of recovery gear inside of it. Um, and then you can see my gooseneck connection as well as my fifth wheel connection. So right here are the four pucks. The back two are covered with the little flaps. Um, and then you can see the goose ball where it drops in right there, or at least the spot for the goose ball. Um, again, nothing wrong with that. I have an eight and a half foot bed on this truck. When you come to the side, you can definitely see that the actual goose ball connection is placed pretty much directly over the rear axle. It's actually directly over the rear axle. And that's one of the benefits of hauling with a fifth wheel or a gooseneck connection is that you put all of that pin weight down over the back axle, which puts as much pressure on the back axle as possible, which gives you really good traction on the ground and it helps control a trailer from swaying, moving because in essence, you're not hauling the weight behind the axle, you're hauling it over the axle. But one of the challenges that I've ran into personally with our fifth wheel as well as our gooseneck trailer is that when the tailgate's down and you're connecting, the tailgate gets really close to the back or the front wall of the fifth wheel or my gooseneck trailer. And it only clears it by a few inches. Now, that's one of the issues. The second issue is when it comes to your turning capabilities. If you have a fifth wheel right here, you have to make sure that the front of your fifth wheel is designed in such a way that it can clear the cab of your vehicle. And I demonstrated in a video where I can actually pull off a 90 degree turn with the fifth wheel. The overhang is actually high enough that it goes over the toolbox right here, and it's, <laughs> At the end of the day, it's about an inch away from hitting the cab, which means if you're on any type of a hill or slope, you could either have more space or less space. So B&W and several other folks have created an offset goose ball, which basically drops into their fifth wheel hitch receiver, basically the fifth wheel portion down here, the brackets and the rails that allows you to actually move the ball back about four or five inches. And what's the benefit of that? 
Well, imagine having less than an inch of cab clearance with the fifth wheel to having four to five inches of clearance with the fifth wheel. That's one piece of it. The second piece of it is it gives you more space behind the truck as well. Now, the downfall, some people may say, is that it's going to throw off the balance. It's going to throw off where that pin weight is resting, because now if it's resting a few inches behind the rear axle, that's a big shift. Now, it is going to be a shift, but it's not going to be a big shift, mainly because if you look at where the tire is, you look at the contact patch to the ground, if you move four or five inches behind the center point, you still have the majority of that weight, the vast majority of that weight, pressing down pretty much over that rear axle still. So it would be very, very, very minor, probably unnoticeable in terms of the difference from a towability perspective. And again, that's because you don't have the weight wagging the back of the truck. You don't have it back here trying to cause the back of the truck to pivot. You still have the weight resting right in this area, which is still predominantly over the back axle. Well, how does Gen Y fix this problem when the problem exists because the factory fifth wheel connection, gooseneck connection back here, the factory mount system that's in place does not allow for an offset ball? Well, most of the time what people end up doing is they end up getting a coupler for their gooseneck that actually kind of juts out this way. So it moves the trailer further back and it allows you to have that offset you're looking for, basically move the trailer further away from the truck just by about four or five inches. With fifth wheels, you really can't do that. Even with the goose box connection we have over there, unless some manufacturer comes up with a really unique way of moving the coupler further away, it just doesn't make sense. And then you add a bit more of a lever arm to the front of your RV, which is something you also want to avoid. So what did Gen Y do? Let me show you. So the name of their product is called the Goose Puck, and it is the five inch offset ball puck mount for Ford 2017 through current. 25,000 pound towing capacity. So, this is it in front of us. I have it next to the B&W setup. And this is essentially the way that the folks over at Gen Y were able to create a really, really innovative solution to moving the ball further back. Now, how does this work? So, this portion right here is where your factory ball mount is for the goose ball. Basically, the area that this would normally drop into, this drops into. So this drops in right there. But how do you keep this whole piece from just spinning around inside of the gooseball mount? Well, easy. They make this really cool wing. I don't really know what they call it. Let me move this box out of the way. The wind's hitting it. But they make this really cool wing that taps into two of your puck mounts. So that adds the stability to prevent this from moving. And if you look at this, I don't know if it's exactly an inch, but that's about an inch thick piece of steel. Look at the welds, absolutely fantastic. This thing is super robust. You can see how it's designed down here. Has the same ball bearing style mounts that lock it into place in your uh, gooseneck connection. And then you have the ball that's welded to it. So if I compare the height over, it's probably less than a half an inch height difference, which that should actually work out really well for me. This should still give me the height that I'm looking for, that extra height clearance, because typically a goose ball, when you drop it in to the gooseneck connection in the back of the truck, drops down about an inch lower than this. So this is still going to give me additional height, which is really nice. But the cool aspect here is where my B&W ball would stick up right here on the back of the truck. This one sticks up five inches further back. Again, still pretty much on top of the rear axle. So it's not as if it's way off base. It's not as if it's far enough behind the axle to cause like a tremendous amount of sway or any type of an imbalance. It might be slightly different, but I would venture to say, and my guess, and my best guess here is that it would probably make no difference at all for most people towing. But yeah, this is what it looks like. Very cool. I am super surprised I haven't seen more marketing around this solution because it is absolutely a brilliant solution. Um, super innovative. It's hard to believe that, that they came up with this and no one else had come up with it prior. But this is such a cool solution. We're going to assemble it. The process looks pretty dang simple. Pretty much looks like you're going to attach this right here and then these attach right here and you simply thread everything in place, pin it in place, and you're good to go. So let's go ahead and get that process started. Okay, so what I'm going to do here first is I'm going to make sure I have this oriented the right way. Flip this over, got the instructions right here. You can see how the flange is sticking upright right there. I am going to 
thread the bolts through from the bottom, torque them to 20 pound. Okay, so we have everything tightened down to 20 foot-pounds. And we just need to attach the end pieces right here. And it looks like they don't actually lock into the puck system. They just drop into the puck system. Because all you're looking for is something to keep this assembly right here from rotating when it's dropped into your ball mount. So let's go ahead and get the uh, rest of this assembled. Okay, you can probably tell these are notched right here on the top and bottom, and that's how it fits into these holes right here without, uh, without spinning themselves. Also looks like there's just a little bit of movement in there as well to give you some adjustability. And then they give you two of these nuts to fasten these on. And then right here you have two retaining pins. I love how they do this. So the process of putting these on is the easiest I've ever seen. And you know, pins have never been that difficult to install, but anything you can do to make things a little bit more convenient and safer is nice. And they do a great job with these. So they just slide in like this, and then you put it over like this, lock it in, and lock it in place like that. Okay, something else that's really cool about this is they've given you some adjustability here because once you lock your hitch assembly in place or the the mount down here, you might need these to clear like a bed rug or a bed mat, something like that. So we're going to see how well this works. We're going to go ahead and throw this inside of the truck and see how it fits. Okay, so we're in the bed of the truck. We're going to try to get this mounted in place. First thing I need to do is uncover my two pucks over here. Looks like I have to remove or pull this pin up right here, this lever, to release the ball bearings underneath to allow this to drop in, and then those should drop in as well. Okay, so what I'm noticing here is that the, the tolerance between the opening for the goose ball and the actual kind of metal puck that has to drop in the center here is very, very tight. So I'm having to kind of worm it side to side. I'm not sure overall how that is going to impact things once I have to put these side pieces straight down, but we'll find out.
Okay, so I'm a little out of breath. I ended up having to pull this whole thing back out because it's just too dang tight. And you have to shimmy it side to side to get it to go down in there. And then when you're doing that, unfortunately, you can't drop these pins in if you're gonna need to shimmy it. So the whole point of these pins is to prevent that from happening. I went ahead and cut these off because Quite frankly, I don't even know why I left them as flaps. They're not needed. And it gives me a little bit better access. I'll go ahead and cut this one off too. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and grease that up a little bit just to see if it allows this to go in there a little bit easier. Okay, all greased up. Let's see if I can get it to, uh, to get in there a little easier this time. Well, that worked out a little easier. And pin is in place, or at least the ball bearings are in place because the handle's down. Then I can throw that pin on top. And these are in place too, so you can actually adjust these down pretty easily. And you don't really need to, but um, I guess the whole point of this is so you have them in a position to where they don't move. Wow, that is snug. So that is really cool. So typically your goose ball would be right here. Now it's positioned five inches further back. And you can tell just by looking at the layout of the puck system in the truck that it's not too far back. It's still within the footprint of this puck system, which arguably is what carries the weight whenever you have a fifth wheel hitch in here. So the weight is gonna be positioned again, a little further back. One thing to keep in mind, this section right here, even though it's made out of quarter inch formed steel, it's not necessarily the major or not even a factor really in terms of the towing capacity of this hitch. Now this has a 25,000 pound towing capacity. It doesn't actually say what your, your downward pressure or your hitch weight capacity here, your pin weight is, but um, it would be interesting to know. I'll see if I can find that information. Um, and this bracket right here is only to keep it from rotating. That's it. The main point of weight is going to still be this area right here right and again this just keeps it from rotating and they use quarter inch thick looks like powder coated steel for that so yeah this is really a really innovative solution they've done a great job here because this addresses a concern a lot of people have had and if you've had the factory oem puck system fifth wheel gooseneck prep you haven't been able to address offset hitching up your trailer without having to get a special coupler for certain gooseneck type couplers or a certain adapter. So this is a really, really innovative solution for that. And it solves a need that a lot of people have been looking for a solution for. So we have it in place. This thing is incredibly robust. I mean, I, I, I can't foresee a scenario where this thing fails under normal usage. And again, it's rated up to 25,000 pounds. We're going to put some grease on here and we're going to go to the uh, gooseneck trailer and hitch up to it. Okay, so I'm here at my Texas Pride Gooseneck trailer. This is one absolutely beautiful tilt deck trailer from the folks over at Texas Pride. Uh, dry tongue weight on this thing, just the weight pressing down on the back of the truck without a load on it, is about 1,400 pounds. So this thing's a beast. The trailer dry weighs like 7,000 pounds, so it's a very heavy trailer. A um, lot of tongue weight resting on the back of it, or pin weight resting on the back of the truck whenever you have it loaded before you've ever actually put anything on the trailer. So balancing out your trailer is very important, especially with the tilt deck trailer. But we got hydraulic front jacks. Let's go ahead and get this thing raised up, back the truck on and see what my clearance looks like. Before doing this, I would have like this much clearance to the tailgate, not even kidding you. Um, if you approached this trailer at an angle unless it was at a 90 degree angle, you couldn't hitch up to it because it was so close. Maybe you might have maybe five inches, but you could not connect to it at an angle at all. You just didn't have the ability to drop the tailgate. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how much clearance I now have with five extra inches of offset coming off the back. 
So let's go ahead and get the legs raised up and check it out. Yep, so I'm doing an interesting tug test. Basically, I've hooked onto the ball. You saw the auto coupler latch the ball in place, and then I lift up on it if it lifts up. So that's a, a way that you can do a tug test with a gooseneck. All right, got both of my landing gear up. Love having hydraulic landing gear. It's just, it just makes it a lot easier. Okay, so check this out. Look at the clearance I have now. I have about a foot, if not more, clearance, which means this is how close it would have been before. And now look how much room I have. I can actually walk behind here now and do what I need to do and still have the clearance I need, which is really nice. Love my Bulldog Auto Coupler. If you guys watched my video from a long time ago, you might have seen I had a Gen Y, one of their Torsion Flex uh, couplers on. It was really cool, really liked it. The problem was is the trailer sat a bit nose high when it was on there. And then uh, secondly, it did not have an auto coupler, so you really had to get in there to pop a pin in place. But other than that, it was exceptionally well built. Super cool coupler. All right, let's get the chains in place, connect the uh, seven way. Let's hit the road and see how this thing handles. So this is an absolutely cool setup. I got an additional five inches of clearance between the back of the truck and the trailer. Over the side, you can definitely see where that clearance comes from. That's where the ball would typically be. And that's where the ball is at right now. Very nice.
Okay, so now I'm not gonna say what I'm doing here is not typical for most gooseneck trailers, but I think most folks who tow goosenecks understand why having five extra inches offset in the back can give you the ability to clear corners in ways that you normally might not be able to. It can also give you the ability to hitch up to your trailer when you may otherwise typically be struggling to do it because you have to hitch up to it at an angle and you won't be able to drop your tailgate down if you're at that angle. Also, if you're hauling something like a fifth wheel or something like an RV and you have a gooseneck conversion on it, this gives you a tremendous amount of capability in terms of giving you extra overhang to cab clearance. So typically, again, a fifth wheel gets really close to this area, especially when you're making tight turns. And having an additional five inches of offset can definitely be all the difference in the world between being able to turn sharp or not. Even with an eight and a half foot bed, a lot of people say, well, you can do that on any eight foot bed and that's entirely not true. A lot of fifth wheels and trucks with eight foot beds simply can't make the clearance to turn completely at a 90 degree. Now, I'm well beyond 90 degrees at this point. You can tell the trailer is definitely much further that way. That said though, this is just kind of an example. Again, with gooseneck trailers, you should be able to do this pretty often. You don't really have to have something offset to get you there, but on a fifth wheel, to be able to turn incredibly sharp, you have to have several things. You have to have the clearance right here whenever you're turning, so your hitch on your fifth wheel doesn't make contact with the side. You have to have the overhang clearance right here, especially if you have a toolbox. It needs to be low profile enough that you can clear that. And then you also have to have the cab clearance in front of the actual fifth wheel overhang. But very, very cool product. It's about 500 bucks on e-trailer. Um, I honestly think it's a pretty dang good value if this is specifically something you're struggling with and you're looking for a solution. Um, it towed the trailer, no problem at all. Uh, I have no doubt in my mind, personally, that the 25,000 pound rating is, uh, is easily met. The folks at Gen Y build incredibly robust products. If there's one really, really positive thing I can say about Gen Y is they don't skimp on quality. They have absolutely phenomenally built products. And this is just another example of that, but they add the innovativeness of giving you this really cool wing that connects to the two, I guess you could say front puck connections to prevent that thing from rotating. So you can have that five inch offset coming back. Anyways, guys, I'll throw a link in the description of this video if this is something you may be interested in. Super cool. I think I'm just going to leave it in the truck because that is more valuable to me in there the way it is than not having it in there. So very, very nice. You can see I'm still using my B&W uh, little chain connections there, which are super awesome and they work really well. But we're going to get the trailer put up. I don't have anything especially heavy to haul with it today, but I definitely wanted to take a moment and demonstrate this product to you. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.